those of you who like to read fantasy novels have probably heard of the supposed power of writing which was considered a magical skill and also the power of names and it was modern people speaking modern languages like English um, this seems like a very interesting and quaint idea and we cannot really imagine how a person's name would grant us power. But names in these older magical languages very much were, you could say, a blueprint, uh, a construction manual. Like, okay, I take some of this energy, that energy, and I mix these energies together and then I have something new. So it would basically tell you how to assemble and possibly also how to disassemble something. So it is not just a name, but it's very much a blueprint, an energetic blueprint to whatever it is that you were talking about. Modern languages are no longer like this. So languages have evolved. You could say there was an age where languages were what they would call divine languages or the languages of creation where the sounds were resonating at uh, very high frequencies with very high powers and these powers would manifest themselves downward into a physical form and we evolved away from this yeah, magical language to a much more individualized personal language a language of the mind where we can create concepts, where we can play with concepts without having to deal with horrendous consequences all the time because whatever you think or say if that would immediately manifest or happen um, well then the good thing is nobody would be a liar anymore but the bad thing is the world would be quite disastrous because people cannot really control their thoughts, their emotions or what they say. Many people say things they regret. Many people lie willingly or un even unknowingly. And if everything we would say would come to pass, the world would be a very, very dangerous place. So in a way, the degradation of languages, the moving away from magical languages into more mental languages, it's a safeguard um, so that people can play around with their thoughts, can play around with language without harming anybody, without causing any strong effects either on themselves or on other people. Then languages became even more, um, you could say in a way, degenerated if you look at it from a genetic perspective. Because instead of being merely mental languages, which in a way deal with concepts, um, it became even more and more individualized, more in a lower vibration, a more narrow vibration, until we develop languages for feelings, for sensations, for emotions, for desires, things which are purely individual to us, which are no longer big concepts or um, shared concepts or communal values, they can be now about very specific things like how I feel, what I want, what I need, how I experience something. So these new languages give us the tools really to individualize ourselves, to not see ourselves as a part of a community or part of a, a greater goal or a greater mission but really to be in the moment, be in the now, and to focus completely on something very, very small, very little, very microscopic, and to make, blow that up into something of immense importance to us. Well, as we can, you can imagine, what yeah, is up can come down, but what is down can also go up. So we're trying to evolve a more social language. Languages which will combine all these levels of consciousness, the divine level of consciousness of the things which are in a way waiting to manifest, waiting to be created, to come into the world, the 
mental languages which help us to work with greater concepts and to manipulate these concepts and to think ahead, to experiment, um, to create logic. The individual languages which can help us to fathom emotions and experiences. And ultimately this should evolve into a social language. A social language combines all these elements of uh, relating to the higher uh, powers but also respecting the individual, um, being aware of the greater common interests but still also finding room for the individual. So our human minds are still trying to make this step, to make this leap into a very social collective consciousness and language ultimately will have to follow that. But this is also the power of languages. So if you say something in a different language it will not only sound very differently but it will also create different associations, different vibrations, different energetic effects in you. And certain languages, older languages, are very good because they're very magical and certain modern languages they're very good because they allow us to express things in very strong detail to really describe our sensations. So ultimately for whatever process you need, you want to work with, you should use an appropriate language, a language with an appropriate vibration to describe what is happening on that level. Also as a result of the difference of languages and the relation between language and consciousness, um, people who speak different languages or use different languages uh, tend to develop different abilities because their consciousness is um, more enabled by that language, by having the concept to work on a certain vibration. So. It's not always very easy to, uh, to try to do everything with just one language. Um, but if you can get the right note, that's very helpful. Second thing is, of course, for a language to be able to work, you have to be able to work with that language. You have to be able to feel it. You have to be able to think it. And you also have to be able to speak it, to pronounce it. And that's an art in itself, because language is on the one hand just a vibration of the air. But the voice, breath and vibration are also vehicles for different types of energy and different chakras, which can also move their energy along with that vibration. So different people can naturally send out different vibrations and will need different languages or different types of sounds to do that with. So not all languages are equally useful or powerful and it's very good for an individual to find a language or a system of symbols which is very much attuned to their natural state. So I hope that this has explained a little bit of the background of how we yeah, moved into our current state but also the difference between older symbols which derive from these older languages and modern symbols which are very much more individualistic in nature. In my next video I will talk a little bit more about different forms not relating with language in how we can use and work with symbols.